Welcome to the set of lectures on Mendelian genetics. Mendelian refers to Mendel, Gregor Mendel. We will refer to him during the course of uh, this lecture and it will also become clear to you why we are looking at something that is so old, what is the relevance nowadays. Many diseases have a genetic basis. You know that each cell in the body has the same set of genes, each somatic cell in the body has uh, the same set of genes um, and it does not matter whether it is the brain cell or the liver cell or a skin cell and so on and so forth, they all have the same set of genes that we inherited from our parents. They could be expressed differently depending on uh, where they reside and so on and so forth, uh, we will not get into that, but the basic material is the same. And since the same genes are present in every single cell throughout the body, genetic diseases will manifest across and there is nothing much can be done, it can only be managed. It is rather difficult to cure them as yet, genetic or gene therapy has um, some promise, it is uh, it's been studied for quite a long time, it has had a few successes. But uh, I think it needs quite a bit of development before uh, it gets to a, a good acceptance stage. Let us start with some data. In India, an estimated 5200 infants with sickle cell disease, 9000 with something called beta, beta thalassemia, 21400 with Down syndrome and 390,000 with G6PD deficiency are born each year. Okay. These terms some of which we have seen earlier sickle cell disease you know sickle cell anemia the same thing it is called sickle cell disease. If you want you could look at this video which is also given in the um, PDF file which can be clicked from the PDF itself. This is an optional video to know about sickle cell disease nice video but it is an op optional video. Similarly, you could look at this video for knowing what thalassemia is, especially beta thalassemia, this alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. You could click on this again an optional video. Down syndrome, uh, I would suggest that you watch the first 3 minutes of this video. It has a very nice overview of uh, the, the genetic basis itself and uh, it gives an introduction to the Down syndrome and then it gets into a lot of research aspects. Um, that might uh, be a little beyond this course, the research aspects. The first 3 minutes are very nice. I would recommend that you watch this, the first 3 minutes of this video. And then there is something called G6PD deficiency which seems to affect a large number of infants born every year. Right? Uh, this is a social aspect that is given uh, an optional video and this is an allele view that is given of G6PD deficiency which you may want to look at. Okay. These are optional except the first 3 minutes I would say is highly recommended. Uh, this is actually from a source because these are numbers and these are estimates. This is actually from a source a paper published in 2002 by Verma and Bijarnia, the burden of genetic disorders in India and a framework for community control it is published in public health genomics. This was in 2002, the numbers of course would be different now, uh, but at least we have something that we can uh, hold on to in terms of numbers, that is why this was chosen. Gives you an idea of the prevalence of such diseases in India. We have already seen the sickle cell disease, let us review this. We know that normal hemoglobin is uh, made from the hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin is a protein therefore, it is made from the genes that correspond to the various uh, subunits that code for the various subunits. In a normal hemoglobin gene there is a glutamic acid in the 6th position. If that glutamic acid becomes uh, valine right, if, if that is changed then just that one change can bring about a different conformation, different 3 dimensional folding in the case of uh, the various protein subunits and we get a hemoglobin molecule that can easily crystallize out 
it will not have an ability to carry oxygen as the normal hemoglobin molecule does uh, and therefore, we get sickle cell anemia right. This is it is as simple as that. The if the hemoglobin is normal the red blood cell would uh, look uh, nicely disc shaped and if it happens to have if it happens to be diseased with sickle cell anemia then the red blood cell takes on a sickle shaped a sickle shape and this causes major difficulties as you have already seen in an earlier video in an earlier recommended video in this course. Similarly, thalassemia is incorrect subunit formation in hemoglobin either the alpha subunit or the beta subunit are incorrectly formed it is different from sickle cell anemia. Down syndrome is caused by an extra chromosome number 21 typically people have 2 chromosomes right. The chromosome 21 has 3 there are 3 20, uh, number 21 chromosomes if that happens this happens in each cell if that happens it results in down syndrome and uh, it manifests in uh, different ways that you can pick up from the video that was recommended that was suggested uh, it is an optional video. And then this G 6 PD deficiency which stands for glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency this enzyme is faulty and because this enzyme is faulty it leads to a lot of difficulties major difficulties right. Again recall that glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase is an enzyme which means it is a protein it is coded by a gene right and therefore, it is a genetic disorder. This is in India in other countries cystic fibrosis it is a very very common uh, genetic disorder in the US. It arises because the channel for chloride in the membranes malfunctions ok because the protein which is actually the, uh, the channel the chloride channel protein that is not properly formed and therefore, that malfunctions the chloride cannot move in and out of the cell. If that happens there is a chloride build up in the extracellular space and that results in mucus build up reduce resistance to infection and without proper intervention death usually occurs below 5 years of age ok. With intervention people live uh, much longer and it affects 1 in 2500 Americans it is uh, uh, very prevalent. You can look at this video which gives you some idea of cystic fibrosis um, it is uh, let us say an optional video and similarly Huntington's disease which actually manifests above 45 is a genetic disorder achondroplasia which is a kind of dwarfism ok. Uh, you might uh, recall Peter Dinklage uh, or from Game of Thrones right uh, Tyrion Lannister is it uh, that person uh, has achondroplasia it is a type of dwarfism okay. that is an inherited disorder a special type of inherited disorder as we will see later. Now, we said all this for this reason if we can predict a child's chances to inherit a disorder okay, something as major as cystic fibrosis the parents can be informed to handle it in their child ok. They will be at least expecting this difficulty in their child they would be mentally prepared to handle it and so on and so forth in their in their own ways and uh, that would be that is a big thing that is already being done and that is a very big thing and the basis for that is what we are going to see in this particular lecture. A simpler way to do the predictions and relevant analysis we know a lot today and there are various ways to do this analysis. But a very simple way in which this analysis can be effectively done is by using the principles of Mendelian genetics and the principles of Mendelian genetics evolved uh, maybe a century and a few decades ago when inheritance was not even understood when people did not understand how uh, what is the basis of uh, the uh, father the son or the daughter looking the, like their father or the mother and sometimes looking like the grandmother or the grandfather and so on and so forth people just did not understand it right. It was during that time late 1800s that these principles were developed 
we will very briefly look at it by Gregor Mendel. Uh, it was a seminal piece of work and those principles are very effective today although they are uh, you know basal principles and there are huge variations known to them. Those principles are still very useful to do this to be able to predict a child's chances to inherit a disorder and that is the reason we are studying or we are looking at Mendelian genetics even today. In any case historically it is nice to know what Mendel did and the development of that if you are interested in genetics, but there is a very uh, useful um, angle to it. When inheritance was not understood uh, maybe a couple, uh, century and a half ago, century ago, the inheritance of characters uh, of course, has, uh, has always had a good appeal with people. People were always curious to know why people inherit characters why a son behaves like the father or the mother or the daughter behaves like the father or the mother and so on or sometimes even like the grandfather or grandmother. Many felt that there was always a blending of traits, there is some trait from the mother, some trait of the father, the son or the daughter has or the offspring has the traits that are a blend of these two traits that was what was believed for a very long time. Uh, although there were many different situations where this clearly was not valid okay. um, and that has always puzzled people, but uh, they were skeptic about it and so on and so forth till Mendel came and told us that uh, the traits are actually passed on by trait particulates. There are, there are aspects that determine traits in an appropriate fashion and if you understand this it is it you can predict to a certain extent what will happen. Okay. So, that is that was the big contribution by Mendel, Gregor Mendel and I would like you to watch this very nice video I would say it is a required video, it is a very nice video slightly long about 20, 25 minutes long old, but it is a very nice video. Okay. I would like you to watch this video to know uh, some parts of Mendel's life which is very interesting and Mendel's experiments and some of the principles that he brought forward. Okay. In this lecture uh, or in these set of lectures we will see what is relevant for us okay. not everything, but we will see just see what is relevant for us. To do that let us we will have to map our current terminology to the terminology that existed uh, during the development by Mendel okay, or uh, soon after that for many years. To do that let us consider cystic fibrosis. The presence of the chloride transporter is important because if that is absent cystic fibrosis arises. There are two possibilities the membrane protein for the chloride transporter is either functional or the membrane protein for the chloride transporter is not functional right. These are the two possibilities and if this is the case the person is normal if this is the case then cystic fibrosis sits in. The presence of the chloride transporter is a character or a heritable feature ok. The heritable feature is called the character sometimes it is not as um, uh, not in molecular terms as this it could be the height of a person or uh, it could be um, the color of the eye and so on and so forth those are those are typical uh, those are typical observable traits or in other words the character is usually an observable thing I am just using uh, a terminology mapping here. So, this uh, aspect if it can be observed it is called a character and it is a heritable feature. The variants of each character each one of them is called a trait ok. For example, the presence is a trait the so, uh, the functionality is a trait the non functionality or the absence is a trait tall tall is a trait or short is a trait ok. Blue colored eyes is a trait brown colored eyes is another trait and so on. So, if the character happens to be eye color blue eye color and brown eye color are the two traits or many two of the many traits of that particular character. If height of something is a character then tall is a trait and short is another trait and so on you get the idea. So, th we are going to deal in terms of characters traits and so on. Each trait 
is determined is determined by two alleles on homologous chromosomes okay and this is what is equivalent to the genes that we know of right on homologous chromosomes means uh, you know that they exist in pairs and therefore we just talked of pair number 21 if there is an extra one it is down syndrome and so on uh, but those two 21s or those two 20s or those two let us say 1 2 3 they are all homologous chromosomes and two alleles on homologous chromosomes determine each trait is what Mendel uh, is, is the equivalence here. So, if these two are homologous chromosomes capital T is uh, a, uh, an allele and small t is another allele. So, you could have various combinations both could be capital they could be alternate one could be this one could be t this one could be small t this one could be small t this one could be t or both could be small t's and these different combinations result in different traits of that character different uh, yeah, different traits of that character the position on the chromosome of that allele is actually called a locus this is just for the terminology okay fine remember that this is a simple approximation there are uh, variations possible we will point them out when we come to them i think at this point in time uh, we will take a break for the next and cover the other things in the next lecture uh, it will be very nice if you can see the recommended video or the required video on Mendel and his work please see that okay. and then let us meet in the next lecture to take things forward see you then.